We'll start with the piecewise function. So with number one, it says to evaluate, given that f of x is 11, if x is less than or equal to 5, it's negative 14. If x is in between 5 and negative 6, but including, or sorry, positive 6, but including 6. And then it's 1 if x is less than 6. So if I were to actually graph this out, right, so 11 would be 9, 10, 11. If it's less than or equal to 5, which means it's going to be an open dot on 5, pointing left. And then it says, from 5 to 6, it's negative 14, so negative 14 would probably be somewhere way down here. Okay, from negative 14, open dot on positive 5, solid dot on positive 6. And it's 1 if it's greater than 6. So greater than 6 means open dot, pointing to the right in that direction. Yep. for 11. Yes, sorry, it's great, less than or equal to 5. So this one is the closed dot. Thank you. And then it says to evaluate it where x is negative 1 and x is 9. So the notation, and remember this is multiple choice, so the notation is going to be f of negative 1 equals and f of 9 equals. Whatever the x value is goes in the parentheses and then whatever it equals goes on the other side. So if f is negative 1, if x is negative 1, then what is the answer? Good. It's 11 because it's less than or equal to 5, and if it's less than or equal to 5, I use 11. How about if it's 9? Good. Questions on that one? All right, then I've got if x is less than or equal to negative 2, then it's 13. So less than or equal to negative 2, 13 is somewhere up here, 10, 11, 12, 13. Less than or equal to would go that way. In between negative 2 and 4 is negative 8. So in between negative 2 but not including negative 2, up to 4 but including 4 this time would be there. And 0, God bless you, if it's greater than 4, so if it's bigger than 4, which means open dot, Zero would be right there on the x-axis, so it should have looked like that. And then f of negative 6 and f of 6. f of negative 6 is less than or equal to negative 2, so this is 13. And f of 6 is greater than 4, which would be 0. Questions on that one? Okay, and then graph the piecewise function. This time I've got the graph underneath there. If x is less than 4, then it's negative 7, so less than 4 would be pointing left. If it's greater than 4, it's 7. Greater than or equal to, so that one gets a solid dot. Questions on piecewise? Okay, graph the piecewise function. If it's less than 4, it's negative 3. And if it's greater than or equal to 4, then it's 3. Yep. And how do you uh, make your y These are all horizontal lines. So y equals negative 3 means that my y is constantly negative 3. Mm -hmm. And then this is the next one, y is 3. That means that the y is always positive 3. Oh, it should be on negative 3. This one, you mean? Yeah, no, I won't let me move it. Hang on. It should be negative 3. Positive 3. Okay, 5 says, given the f of x and g of x, find f minus g of x. So this time I'm doing f of x, this whole thing, 2x squared plus 8x minus 4x minus negative 5x plus 6. And then what happens with that negative? It's distributed to both. So this is 2x squared plus 8x minus 4 plus 5x minus 6. 
and then write it in decreasing degree order. There's only one squared term. There's two x terms, and there's two constants. Same thing with the next one. This time g of x, or f of x is 3x squared plus 9x minus 5 minus negative 5x plus 8. Distribute the negative. I get 3x squared plus 14x minus 13. Okay, 7 and 8 are both... Yeah. Okay, uh, 7 and 8 are both multiplication, so I'm going to take 4x squared plus 3x minus 5 and multiply it by negative 2x plus 12. So this gets multiplied by both. This would be negative 8x to the third plus 48x squared. And go to the 3x and multiply it times both. Negative 6x squared plus 36x. And then the last one, multiply negative 5 times both. Positive 10x, negative 60. Combine your like terms. There's only one cube term. There's two x squared terms, and there's two x terms, one constant. Questions on that one? Okay, multiplication again here, 4x squared plus 9x minus 3 times 5x plus 10x. Same process, multiply these two, negative 20x to the third, God bless you plus 40x squared, multiply these two, negative 45x squared, plus 90x, multiply these two, positive 15x minus 30. So negative 20x to the third, combine these two, negative 5x squared, combine these two, and then one constant. Questions on those two? Okay, and then we went to composite functions. So g of f of 3 says do which one first? Do f of 3 first. So f of 3 would be 3 cubed, which is 27 and then do g of 27, which is 4 times 27 plus 3, which is 111. And that final answer is it. You don't have to do it in two parts. Same process here. Okay, f of 3, which we already know from the top because it's the same, is 27. And then 2 times 27 plus 5, 54 plus 5, which is 59. Questions on either of those? Karina? Can you get that Eight? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, horizontal line test. So if it fails, then the inverse is not a function. If it passes, then it is. Would this fail or pass your vertical horizontal line test? Fail, which means the inverse is not a, a relation. Sorry, the inverse is not a function. How about 12? Pass or fail? Pass, so inverse is a function. Ian? I always got confused about that. Is that correct, the inverse, or no? That, no. This is the initial function, and you're saying is the inverse of this function a function. So if for whatever reason we were to graph the inverse, it would work. It would, it would so if you graph the inverse, uh -huh then it would fail the vertical line test. So there's, if you're asking about that one, mm -hmm. if you want to know if that's a function, you do a vertical line test. If okay. you want to know the inverse is a function, you do a horizontal line okay. test. But the directions literally will say horizontal line test. Okay. All right, 13 is asking if these, 13 through 15 are asking if these are, in 13 through 16, 
are asking if they're inverses. And it says determine whether by composition. So this is your f of g of x. So I want to see if f of g of x is equal to x. And I want to see if g of f of x is equal to x. If those are both true, then they're inverses. If they're not both true, then they're not. So this gets plugged in here, 1 fifth times 5x minus 20 plus 4. This is going to cancel x. 1 fifth of negative 20 is negative 4 plus 4. These cancel, and I get just x. So that one works. Then I'm going to do the same thing the other way around. Take this and plug it into here. So 5 times 1 fifth x plus 4 minus 20. Distribute this in. The 1 fifth and the 5 would cancel. The 5 times the 4 would be 20. Subtract. These cancel, and I'm left with x. So the answer here is yes. These are inverses because f of g of x is x, and f of, and g of f of x is x. So do the same thing here. f of g of x and g of f of x. So 1 third times 3x minus 6 plus 2. I get x minus 2 plus 2. That's an x. And then take the f and plug it in. 3 times 1 third x plus 2 minus 6. x plus 6 minus 6. That's x. So this is also a yes. Okay, f of g of x and g of f of x. So g into f is 1 fifth, 5x minus 30 plus 6. And f into g And then the last one, f of g and g of f. both be x in order to work. If one of them is not, then your answer is no. Questions on those. So your packet is 40 questions, and I told you how many questions were on your test. Okay, so probably if there's two questions of one kind on your packet, you're going to see one question of that kind. If there's four questions, you're probably going to see two. So it's kind of proportional to what you should expect for your test. All right, so then we got into, so that was inverses, that was the end of 6, 6. Then we got into 12, 1, which is where this starts. So 12, 1 was the center and the radius of the circle that has a diameter with the end point. So remember that center is midpoint. And the, the radius can either be the distance between... the end points divided by 2, or it could be the distance from the center to the end point. So I'm going to start with 17. Find the center. So negative 9 plus negative 1 over 2, and then negative 6 plus 0 over 2. This is negative 10 over 2, negative 6 over 2, which is negative 5, negative 3. That's your center. So if your center is a whole number, then it's probably easier to find the distance between the center and the end point, okay? Then you don't have to divide by 2. If your center is not a whole number, if it ends up being fractions, then I would go with the first option, which is find the Distance between the endpoints and then divide by 2. So for this one, the radius, I'm going to use the center. And I'm going to use one point, And I'm going to use negative 1, 0 just because they're smaller numbers. You can use either one. So square root of negative 1 minus a negative 5. Excuse the interruption. 
Alisa Tomé, if you're in the building, please report to Student Services Office. Alisa Tomé, thank you. So the radius is five there. So center is negative one zero, radius is five. Questions on that one? Okay, that's 17, 18, 18. Did you, what'd you get? Okay, so sorry. Center here would be negative 12 plus negative 4 over 2, and then negative 4 plus 2 over 2. Negative 16 over 2, which is negative 8. Negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. And then again, their whole number, so I would do distance between that and one of the endpoints, and I'd pick the smaller number, so pick the four, negative 4, 2. This and negative 4, 2. So negative 4 minus a negative 8 becomes plus 8. 2 minus a negative 1 becomes plus 1. And I've got the same numbers, squared 25, which is 5. Go back to 19 and 20, but I want to keep going. Okay, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25 are all. Find the equation of a circle if you're given the center and the radius. So again, you need the standard form, which is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared. And then, then it's just plugging in and squaring the r. That's all you got to do. So x minus 8 squared plus y minus 7 squared equals 36. X minus 6 squared plus Y minus 7 squared equals 49. X minus 9 squared plus Y minus 6 squared equals 64. X minus 6 squared plus Y minus 2 squared equals 64. And X minus 7 squared plus Y minus 3 squared would equal 9. So those should be quick, easy, foolproof questions, okay? Just be careful because obviously they're going to mess with the signs on multiple choice. Uh, you'll get one that maybe is not square. The radius is just in there is three instead of nine. Make sure you're squaring your radius, that kind of stuff. All right, so I came back to 17 through 19. 17 says find the center and the radius of a circle that has a diameter with endpoints of negative six, negative nine, negative six, and negative one zero. So center, I'm going to find the midpoint, negative nine, plus negative 1 divided by 2, which is negative 10 divided by 2, which is negative 5, and then negative 6 plus 0 divided by 2, negative 3 divided by 2, or sorry, negative 6 divided by 2, which is negative 3. So the center would be negative 5, negative 3, and then the radius, <clears throat> I can either go from here to either one of the endpoints or find the distance between these and divide by 2. I'm going to pick these two just because they're smaller. So negative 1 minus a negative 5 becomes plus 5 squared. Plus 0 minus a negative 3 becomes plus 3 squared. I'd get 4 squared plus 3 squared, 16 plus 9, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. So center is 5, negative 3, and the radius is 9. Sorry, it's 5. All right, I'm going to do number 18 off here to the left. So same thing, negative 12 plus negative 4 divided by 2, and then negative 4 plus 2 divided by 2 would be my center, negative 16 over 2, negative 2 over 2, negative 8, negative 1. That's the center. And then use that with one of the points. So I'm going to pick the second point for negative 4, 2, and do the distance with those two. So negative 8 minus a negative 4 becomes plus 4. Negative 1 minus 2 squared. Negative 4 squared plus, that is a negative 1 minus 1, minus 2, which is negative 3 squared. 16 plus 9 square root 25, which again is fine. So center and radius. And the last one. which is 19. 
3 plus 15 over 2, and negative 17 plus a negative 1 over 2, 18 over 2, which is 9, negative 18 over 2, which is negative 9. And then find the distance between. So I'm going to pick um, 3 and negative 17, and then these points. So 3 minus 9 squared plus negative 17 minus a negative 9, which becomes plus 9. Negative 6 squared plus negative 8 squared. 36 plus 64 is the square root of 100, which is 10. So center, 9, negative 9, radius 10. Last one, x minus 3 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 36. All right, then you've got write the equation with the center and containing a point. So I'm missing the radius. I have to find the radius. The radius is the distance from the center to the point. So I do the distance formula, negative 2 minus 2 squared plus 1 minus 4 squared. I get negative 4 squared plus that's a 1 minus 4, negative 3 squared, square root 16, plus 9, which is square root of 25, and my radius is 5. So x minus 2 squared plus y minus 4 squared would equal 5 squared, or 25. I do the same thing for the next three questions, which again, I'll go back later and work it out. You square, yeah, so you don't even need to keep, like, I, when I get square root 25, I can just get rid of that root and make it 25 instead of having a square root to get the 5 and then re-square it to get the 25. If it's, a, if it's a, a perfect square, it won't be that big of a deal. But if it's not, like, if it was square root of 30, I don't want to try to simplify that and then square it again. You can just square it. Okay, number 31, write the equation of the standard form for the ellipse. So, again, ellipse has two forms, x squared over a squared plus, b squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1, and x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals 1. Which one's vertical, which one's horizontal? How do I know if it's vertical? So which one's the major axis? How do I know it with letters? A. So if the A is under the Y, so this one would be vertical, and this one would be horizontal. So looking at 31, is this vertical or is it horizontal? It's vertical. So I know already I'm going to have the A squared under the Y squared, which could help you with process of elimination already because if the bigger number's under the X, you can cancel it out. Okay. And then the A is the vertex on your major axis, which is 5 and negative 5. So A is 5. The B is the covertex, which is along your minor axis, which is at negative 3 and 3, so B is 3. So this would be x squared over 3 squared, which is 9, plus y squared over 5 squared, which is 25. All right, back to 28, 29, 30. So 28, you've got to find the radius first because I've got the center. I just don't have the radius. So the distance between the center and the point it contains is the radius. Square root of negative 9 minus a negative 3 becomes plus 3 squared plus 7 minus 1, which is negative 6 squared plus 6 squared, 36 plus 36. The square root of 72. So when I plug it back in, I would get x plus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals the square root of 72 squared, which is 72. 29, same process. The distance between the center and the point that the circle contains would be 7 minus 4 squared plus 7 minus 3 squared, 3 squared plus 4 squared, 9 plus 16 squared to 25, which is 5, but I'm going to plug it back in. So x minus 4 squared plus y minus 3 squared would equal the square root of 25 squared, which is 5. Sorry, the square root of 25 squared, which is 25. And then the last one, 
So distance between the center and the point that's on the circle, square root of 0 minus 4 squared plus 4 minus 1 squared, negative 4 squared plus 3 squared, 16 plus 9, square root of 25. The equation would be x minus 4 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals square root of 25 squared, which is 25. Okay, 32, write the equation. If the center's at 0, 0, the vertex is 0, 8, and the covertex is 3, 0. So this is my A, this is my B. Is the major axis horizontal or vertical? Vertical. So this would be x squared over the b squared, which is 9, plus y squared over the a squared, which is 64, equals 1. 33. This is my a. This is my b. Is this vertical or horizontal? Which axis is my vertex along? The x or the y? The x, which makes it horizontal. So this would be x squared over 9 squared, which is 81, plus y squared over 7 squared, which is 49. Okay, 34 gives me a focus and a co-vertex. So this is my c, and this is my b. And this is where I need c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So 144 equals a squared plus 25. Track the 25. This would be 3. So my A squared is 119. My square root of A would be, or A would be square root of 119. But all I need that for is, yeah. Oh, I totally did. I subtracted it, and it should have been adding. Thank you. This is minus. This would be plus. I thought they were whole numbers. So this is 13. Thank you. So then I know that the focus is along the x-axis, and the covert text is on the y, which makes this horizontal. So x squared goes over a squared, which would be 169 y squared goes over b squared, which is 25. I'm going to have to do the same thing for 35, 36, and 37. Use c squared equals a squared minus b squared to find the missing one. So for 35, this is c, and this is now b. This, is, this one is a. And this one is B. And this one, wait, this is wrong. This has got to be a typo. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with a, co a vertex being 4 and a covertex being 6? Good. Covertex can't be bigger. Okay, so switch those. Make this the covertex. And this the vertex. So now B is 4 and A is 6. So for that one, the vertex is along. If we make this the vertex, it's along the y-axis. So X squared gets the smaller one, 16. Y squared gets the bigger one, which is 36. And then I'll go back and do the other ones again, but I want to make sure we get through at least one of each kind before the bell rings. Okay, so we came back to 35. So this time it says that the center is 0, 0. The focus is 0, 24, which is on the y-axis. So I know this is vertical. The C would be 24, and the B, which is the covertex, is 10. So 24 squared would equal A squared minus 10 squared. 576 equals A squared minus 100. 676 would equal A squared. And I know that's going to go under the y because it's vertical. So x squared over b squared, b being 100, or 10 would be 100, plus y squared over 676 would equal 1. 
And again, that's 35. 36. This time it gives you the center, the vertex. So 4, 0 being the vertex means A is 4. It's on the x-axis, which means that this is horizontal, which means the A is going under the x. And then the co-vertex is 0, 6, meaning the B is 6. So x squared over... Oh, remember we said that this has to be switched. So this would have been co-vertex, and this would have been vertex. So this B is 4, and the co-vertex being along the x axis means that that's switched. It's not horizontal, it's vertical. And that this is A is 6. So x squared would be over 4 squared, plus y squared would be over 6 squared. x squared over 16, plus y squared over 36. And the last one is 37. So 37 vertex is at 5, 0, which is on the x-axis. This is horizontal. A is 5. Covertex is 0, negative 2, which is on the vertical axis, and B would be 2. So x squared would go over 25. Y squared would go over 4 equals 1. Oh, that's it. Just kidding.